All right, folks, I uh, guess we'll start on the power unit. We've got the forklifts done and well done as they're going to get for this for the time being and uh, got the engine unloaded that I needed to get unloaded. So I need this for an edger and we're going to try to get it together and put it on the edger and show you what it uh, how it works. Uh, hopefully in this video and it's not a bad job. I just got it sitting here. It's all messed up here but uh so two inch shaft i gotta make for the bearing and the pulley i want the pulley on the back i'm not going to put a bearing on the opposite side this is actually a bearing it'll take the side load so we should be fine with it <clears throat> okay uh i've got a governor here from a subscriber uh whether i'm going to get it hooked up you know right now or not i don't know but i'm going to go ahead and try to get it mounted and get this done uh, I've got to change the tires on this trailer. They're flat. Uh, this trailer came from Gene Foster. This is the one that the uh, Frick engine was mounted on. This is going to work perfect for our power unit. It's nice and heavy, and that's a good thing because you don't want it, you know, too light because it'll, you know, drag itself toward the what you're working with. And uh, I think this heavy trailer will be perfect for this. So we'll get the forklift up here and get this picked up, back up, and uh, try to get everything arranged here how I want it. Start getting it mounted, mounted down and uh, radiator mounted. And uh, let me see, we're gonna have to do a fuel tank. We're gonna have to do a battery, of course. Uh, alternator that's on this, I'll probably have to change to a GM unless I can figure out how to wire this. I don't even know if it's an internal regulator. Uh, well, we got three wires. Three wires total coming from it. We might configure that out, which is pretty simple. A GM will probably mount right in place, but. We're going to do away with a few things. We don't need the 1500 watt uh, water heater that's in line with the heater hoses. And, uh, you know, we're going to run the bare minimum. We'll put some kind of a little panel on it with switches so we can turn it on and off and start it. Well, start it. I guess it's got a cable shut off. So all we need is a uh, key switch and a push button. Key switch you will need because you don't want power going to your alternator all the time or it'll run the battery dead. So. All right, let's see what we can get done here. All right, folks, now you know the secret behind how I designed this stuff. As soon as she gets through scanning, she'll, uh, she'll tell me what I need to do. All right, folks, here's where we are. Okay, so I pulled the cross member off the engine. Then I mounted the cross member in where I thought the height needed to be. Uh, I've just got it welded in, you know, well, I'm not going to say temporary, but I've got it just spotted in. So, we got that part taken care of. It offsets the engine over to the side. But I don't mind that because it actually the radiator's offset to the side too. So, that'll make the radiator line up right, be straight. Uh, transmission's going to be offset over here, which is not, a, not an issue anyway. So, alright, what we're doing now, we've got our bearing on our shaft. We're going to turn out a solid piece that slides up inside and fits our belt pulley so that's what we're going to do next on the lathe but we've got these brackets which came off of the the uh 4500 uh ambulance that i turned into a rollback so we'll cut them pieces off and these are going to lay in and get welded in and go up to the cross member we'll stub it off straight and weld that in and that'll turn that into a couple good mounts and then we've got to cut out a little area here for a shaft and weld us a plate on the back to hold our bearing when we get it where we want it and then uh, we can get our shaft turned down. So this is, like I said, it's not gonna take long at all. This is a pretty quick easy job. And this is actually not a Mercedes. This is a CAD engine for now. All right, folks, here's what we've got. We've got our cut out, bearing tacked on. Uh, I think that's where I want it. If not, I'll break it loose because you know they're just tacks. So we're gonna Get to work on making the shaft that presses in here inside of this one uh, i don't know how far we're going to go in how much clearance i give it you know it depends on how far we go now it's going to step down a little bit for that pulley and i'm going to actually leave a gap between and have it step down a little bit that way when i weld it i can weld it in really good and then grind it down the way if i ever need to get that bearing off i can slide it past it no problem so i think everything's working out good all right you tell one of them there mechanics hammers? All 
give enough room for a weld. Now, as we weld it, I'm going to get a magnetic base and how indicated in. Of course, looks pretty darn straight. So I machined that down. I didn't even check the size of it. I machined it down until it fit the cup. Uh, it's probably about 190 thousandths, but not positive. Uh, so we'll get a dial indicator in, get that checked, get this pulley back together and get it on there. Alright? Alright folks, she ain't gonna have much wobble in her, she should be just fine. Uh, pulley's bolted on, uh, bearings tightened down, just gotta shoot some grease in it. Get the rest of the bolts back in the uh, drive shaft. I think that'll do fine. Like I said, this bearing, this is not a self-aligning bearing. So this one can take some side load without twisting. So it's not going to put any pressure up here. So it should do fine, just like it is. If we have trouble, we'll figure it out later. I just kind of like to leave it open. That way it's a lot easier to get your belt on. And you can use an endless belt. And I've got a few of them. That way we don't have to cut them and, you know, put the alligator teeth in them. So we've got more welding to do here. And of course, I didn't know I was going to have a lot of interruptions today. It's 5 o'clock already, so probably not going to get finished up like I was wanting. But uh, we're going to get a pretty good ways. Uh, don't know how this is going to work out with rubber mounts on the engine and transmission in this solid. We'll see what it does. I mean, this should take some vibrations out of the engine anyway. And, you know, of course, it's on rubber tires, but we're going to have it, uh, we're going to have it off the ground probably with the jacks. So. We're going to see. But a lot of welding to do. This is just, everything's tacked together. And, uh, I cut that a little deep, didn't I? Probably didn't need to go down that far, but that's okay. It's not like this frame's going to break. You don't have to worry about that. And, uh, we're going to get the radiator mounted. Now, when I went to load this truck when I bought it, uh, or traded for it, the, I seen antifreeze leaking out of the radiator or the front of the engine somewhere you know, onto my bed so what we're going to do is get it tied up i got some heater hoses that need to be plugged off and some things done here but i want to get it and get some some water in it just to see if there's any leaks in that radiator if we got to solder anything or fix anything and we'll get the radiator mounted good and we didn't see any knocks on it you know we didn't hit it too bad with the fan or anything you know to knock anything in it uh, Fuel line, I guess this has got a fuel pump. There's a manual pump there, but I guess it's got a regular pump in it. That's just, that's all it had for a fuel line. So we just need to get a tank on it and a return. Uh, we'll have to get our plug plugs wired back up. I don't know what I done when I took this engine out of that truck. I loaded it down from the bottom, but I must have totally forgot to unplug the wire to that or something because I ripped them all loose from the, from the glow plugs, which is not a problem. So. Things are only a problem if you let them make it a problem, let them become a problem. Okay, so clutch master cylinder right here. Okay, all it does is push in this hole and pull out. So the plans are to build something with a handle on it to push in, to disengage the clutch. We'll probably just have a chain or something hanging, you know, to hold it. And then when we want to engage it, we just, you know, hold the handle, undo the chain and or undo the chain and then uh, let the handle come back and just want to i want to have a way to disengage it but i want to be able to re-engage it pretty pretty easy uh, i'm kind of looking at my drive shaft and it, it's like it's down a little bit so i may bust it back loose and raise it up a little bit It'd be really easy to do and uh it'll get that jointed at a little bit more of an angle too because i think what it is, is i've got everything in line straight with the engine transmission and it's you know going down a little bit but like I said, it'll be okay. And like I said, well, you've seen how far it went up in the in the shaft. Uh, I don't think there's any issue there. And uh, turns easy. There's no reason why that shouldn't be just fine. Okay, folks, I think we're about done for today. Uh, radiator is mounted. We got the top mounted in rubber. Bottom's mounted with the original brackets. I cut I cut it off the cross member that come out of the truck. And let me see. We do not have our heater hoses finished up yet, but the radiator hoses are on. Uh, I've got the mounts done. I just put a plate in there and welded it to the frame, welded it to there. We're not trying to, we're not going for looks on this job whatsoever. It's just trying to get it done. We've got power hooked to it. Uh, 
Everything's looking good there. And let me see if we got it where it'll roll over. I think we're going to be fine there. I don't like that sound I'm hearing in that transmission. I think that was fifth gear. Maybe this is a direct drive. I think that backlash is what we're hearing. A lot of backlash in it. Yeah, I think the backlash. I don't think it'll do that once we get it uh, running. Uh, especially if we get a load on it. Uh, because that was supposed to be driven. It's supposed to be a good one. See where they welded aluminum. They fixed the shifter at one time. So need to get some oil or grease up in that hole there, I think. Uh, let me see. That one's on and done. These mounts are on and done. The cross member. This is all finished up. And let me see. I haven't decided. Everything's welded in and completed except for this plate and the reason is is I haven't decided if I've got this at the right height that I want it uh, we're gonna figure that out but I just wanted to hold off before I done anything that uh, I was gonna regret but it spins really well it's smooth and I think that backlash in that transmission is what we're hearing here so hopefully that won't uh, I don't think that'll affect us once we get it running uh, everything's good though. Uh, fan clear is fine. It's in there. I haven't put water in yet because of that heater hose So we'll find out what's up with it. Really. There's three heater hoses. I don't know. They the weird system, but uh, You know, I, I probably should just plug them all off, but then again, you don't know if they need to flow so uh, let me see fuel lines into a tank and You know, it's not gonna be much. We'll uh, we'll have this thing at least to where we can run it I'm going to get the air, the air cleaner mounted somewhere, uh, air filter, and uh, go ahead and I'll probably try to get it hooked on that that edger. I got some boards I really need to get edged and get done. And uh, this here, we'll probably just take it apart and go through it and bolt it on a plate somewhere or something. I think it just, it sat in the truck. It didn't even, it wasn't even mounted. I mean, I just rushed down in and grabbed it and pulled it out. So, uh, Germans have a different way of doing things on a lot of this stuff so all right so i think everything's going to be fine uh we'll finish up tomorrow in the next video and friday i think i'm going to go to turnersburg to the swap meet and show uh that's where the harrisburg engine came from in uh turnersburg north carolina spokes and cleats so i'm going to head up there and then uh saturday and sunday i got to go to class i've got a a steam class to go to and hopefully I can get done and pass the test and get a, a certificate we'll see how that works out but anyway all right uh, appreciate everybody watching and tomorrow we'll get this finished this get this working anyway all right bye